Welcome back. Today I'm working on the spindle of the Sheldon Vernon horizontal mill. I'm just going to start by cleaning up a couple of spots here on the OD of the spindle. It's really not in all that bad of shape. There's a little bit of surface rust in a few spots. I'm going to stay away from right here and right here. This is where the tapered roller bearings ride. And there is some discoloration, but there's no noticeable wear or any sharp edges or anything like that. Nothing catches my fingernail when I run it across there. So I'm not gonna mess with those areas. I don't wanna change the diameter there at all. And also right here is where a pulley rides that drives the spindle. Um, it's already a nice slip fit, so I'm not gonna mess with that area. Just these areas here with some light surface rust. And I'm just gonna use a little piece of Scotch-Brite. Pretty quick and easy just to take the surface rust off of there. Now what I want to do is clean up the bore of the spindle. This is a number nine brown and sharp taper. And when I got the machine, it came with this arbor installed. It was equally as covered with surface rust and I cleaned up the thing with Scotch-Brite, the same method you just saw. What I want to do is lap or hone the inside of the bore here just to clean out any light surface rust or any high spots, anything that would keep the taper from seating properly. And I don't want to use this because I already scotch breaded it and I don't know how old it is, how worn it is, um, how well it actually fits in there. So I'm going to turn up a number nine brown and sharp taper out of this. This is inch and an eighth, I think it's 1045 is what it is. And I'm gonna use this as a lap or hone along with a little bit of diamond paste to clean up the bore of that. So I'm gonna throw this in the lathe. First thing I'm gonna do is face and center drill both ends. And one of the sides I'm, on, I'm going to drill and tap 7 16 20, and that'll let me use it as a draw bar. If I ever wanna use this thing for an arbor for something down the road, I can use it and use a draw bar with it. got the center in this end 
and then drilled and tapped and cut a angle in here so that it'll accept a center. I had to turn down this end just a little bit in order to get the lathe dog to fit on there. So now I'm all set up to turn this between centers. Those of you that have followed my channel for a while probably recognize this setup. This is the homemade tracer attachment that I made. Basically it just replaces the lead screw in the cross slide here with a small pneumatic cylinder. So this is supplied with a few pounds of air, pushes the cross slide forward, and it rides along a template or pattern back behind there. That template could be a variety of different shapes. So for the machinist hammerhead that I made, this was the template. And then the neck of it uses the other side here as a template. Right now I've just got a straight piece in there and that's gonna let me turn a taper based on the angle that's set at. Let me get some dial indicators set up and I'll show you how I check the angle of that to make sure I'm turning the correct taper. This piece pivots on a screw over here and there's a mic head behind that corner pushing off the back of this bar and that's what allows me to set the angle. You should always check a taper before you turn it whether you had a setup like this or a taper attachment on another machine, you should always use dial indicators to make sure you're actually going to turn the angle that you want it to be. So I've got two dial indicators set up right here. This one is going to measure out one inch of travel of the carriage, and then that one will tell me how much taper there was in that one inch of travel. I'm turning a brown and sharp number nine taper that has 41.7 thousandths of taper per inch. That's off of both sides of the taper, so I'm looking for half of that. I'm looking for about 20.8, 20.9 thousandths of taper on this dial in one inch of travel. I hope you guys can see these dial indicators okay. Uh, they might look a little bit off based on the angle of the camera, but you'll have to trust me, they are exactly zeroed out when looking straight at them. So I'm gonna do one inch of travel on this one. Right there, one inch. And then over here, I'm gonna call that the 20.85 thousandths of taper that I need. I'm using the compound to feed in five or ten thousandths per pass. I started out feeding by hand and now I've got the power feed engaged. And I'm just going to repeat that process until the small end of the taper here is down to 900 thousandths diameter. And that should end up being four and a quarter inches worth of taper.
There's the finished taper. I ended up making it a little bit longer than the taper that's on the arbor that was in the machine when I got it. And that's just because if you actually measure down inside of here, it's just a little over four and three quarters before it actually starts to radius out at the bottom there. So I made this guy not quite four and three quarters just to try to clean up as much of that as possible. So now what I'm gonna use is some diamond lapping paste. This is 1050 grit, pretty fine. And you just mix it with a little bit of something to cut it. So I'm using mineral spirits just to make it a little bit liquidy. This stuff is pretty solid. It's a real thick paste. So I'm just gonna wipe that onto the arbor here and then lightly hone the inside of this and try to clean up some of that. Yeah, I'll put a picture up so you can see it. see where it's touching more right in here than it is up on the end and on that end. The board does look a little bit better. Less, less rust, less junk in there. I'm going to work this for a little while and then I'll take another picture of what it looks like in there afterwards. So it's making pretty much full contact now, all the way down the taper. Try to get you a view down in there. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's not perfect, it's not a mirror finish, but that's not what I was expecting. I just wanted to clean off some of that rust down in there and get rid of any small high spots. So I think it's good. I wanted to do it off of the machine, not installed, so there was no chance of any of that um, diamond compound getting into the bearings. So now that this is cleaned up, I'm going to clean this out really good with some alcohol and scrub it out, make sure there's no diamond paste left, left in there. And then I'm ready to install the front bearing here and get this back into the machine. I've got the spindle all cleaned up and I think I have everything else here I need to get this thing assembled and back into the machine. First off, let me say I am by no means an expert at putting together a spindle. I have near zero experience. If you want some good information, go watch Robin Ronzetti's channel. He is a professional machinist and has very good knowledge on spindles and machining and anything shop related. That said, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do on this 70 year old machine that's gonna be used just for hobbyist use. I've got my parts diagram here so I don't forget to put anything on the spindle while I assemble it. Basically, we're gonna take the spindle. First thing that goes on is this little shield right here. Then the tapered roller bearing. The race is already installed and the housing is already into the column there. So I'll get the bearing on and then I can slide the spindle into the column. Can't forget to put the pulley on and the belts. The V-belts are already tucked up in there so I won't forget them. And then we'll worry about the rear bearing in a minute.
this should be a nice slip fit until right before where it seats right there. So I've got a piece of aluminum pipe that I cleaned up and I'm gonna use that to tap the bearing on there. It seats only on the inner race, not on the cage. Yep, it's definitely going on. Almost there. This is just a uh, Delrin, so it shouldn't be any, shouldn't be doing any damage to the spindle. If anything, I'll just mess up the face of it. Good. This is what I'm going to use to grease the bearing. Molly Coat 33 medium. Friend had this laying around, so that's what I'm going to use. Is there better stuff to use? Yes, probably, but for a hobbyist machine, um, this is not a modern, high accurate, high speed spindle. This is a car wheel bearing, so I think this should work just fine. I'm happy with that. What you don't want to do is pack this thing solid full with grease. So I got some in from the end and then some around the outside. And if I spin this, there's a nice thin coating on everything. So I'm gonna call that good. Now I can feed this through here and I'm going to reach in on the inside and get the pulley. Started. So it's kind of a challenge. There's a trap door down here, and that's what you have to reach up inside to get the pulley on there. Now we're at the back of the spindle. I've got this bearing all ready to go. The race is already in there. So after the bearing, there's another cover. And then the back cover plate screws onto here. After that, there's a spacer to take up some room and then a split nut that allows you to tighten this and preload the bearings a little bit. Before I tighten up that split nut in the back, I want to get this front cover plate on here.
I just very, very lightly tightened up the split nut on the back of the spindle. Didn't want to go too tight with it. There's no play at all forwards and backwards of the spindle. So I'll check it again after I run it for a little while and see if I need to tighten that up just a little bit more, but right now I'm happy with it. I also got the pulley and belts all set on the spindle inside the column. There's zero room for a camera in there, so I couldn't film any of it, but I'll show you a picture so you can see what it looks like. I think I'm finally ready to wire this thing up and see it run. Hopefully in the next video we'll be making chips. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.